Good morning. There we go. Welcome to worship at our downtown campus. I am Pastor Alex Powell. Uh, It is a blessing to be here with you all as we worship, as we celebrate. Would you please stand as you are able for our call to worship led by our own Leah Pauley. We sing your praises in the vineyards of our lives. Where we have become rugged and wild, prune us in the way we should grow. Let your hand be upon us, leading us to Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. Heal the roots of our faith. Bring us rain in drought, shade in scorching heat, and protection in the wilderness. Amen. Let us remain standing as we sing our opening hymn. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let me hear. 
Lord of the vineyard, we ask for your presence and your guidance in your holy wisdom. Tend the vines of our hearts. Teach us your righteousness that our lives may flower with justice. Show us the way to discern your will, hear your word, and grow in your ways as we deepen the roots of our faith through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Be seated. We're going to prepare our hearts for prayer. Because we have many people worshiping online with us, um, we're going to ask that if you have a prayer request that you raise your hand. And uh, Ron will come by with a microphone. We want to make sure that our prayers that are lifted up are also shared with those online um, so that they can be a part of our time together. So if you, we're going to take a moment and pause, but if you would uh, have some buddy or a thing on your heart that you'd like to lift up with the community, please raise your hand. We'll respond with, Lord, in your mercy, and everybody will say, hear our prayers. I want to pray for my wife, Patricia Richardson. She's going to the doctor for some medical treatment things, and please keep her in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, pray for safe traveling mercies for me. Tomorrow I will be leaving via Greyhound from L.A. to Richmond, Virginia. Lord, in your mercy. Continue uh, wellness for my sister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, for Scott Baker of uh, North Campus, who apparently has had a stroke and is in Redlands Community Hospital, and his mother is ill also. For healing, Lord, in your mercy. Any other prayer requests we'd like to lift up? I'd like to lift up my friend Alexa, who had breast cancer removed, but she's on to radiation. Um, and so we're lifting her up for continued uh, support and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Yes. My daughter is leaving to go back to Pennsylvania on Monday, and I wish her a safe journey. For traveling mercies, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's take a moment of silence, and then I will lead a prayer as we bring these things before God. Lord God, we come before you this day as a community, lifting our prayers, our hopes, our wishes, lifting up those whom we love, Lord, that are going through difficult times. Lord, we ask that your healing mercies fall upon us and that your presence, Lord, in the midst of our life be the difference as we hold to hope. Lord God, you have done so much in the midst of our history, in the midst of our lives. Help us to remember your love. Help us to remember your grace and who you are, Lord. Lord, help that focus and change our lives so that we can be your hands and feet of love, so that we can be the body of Christ, Lord. Lord, help us to respond to your love with love. 
Help us multiply your love in this world. And help us, Lord, share your love with the world and the community that is seeking you. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Let us prepare our hearts and our minds in the reading of the scripture this morning. It's found in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 through 12, verse 2. The faith of other Israelite heroes. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled by seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were able, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sewn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all this, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thanks be to God. What is your favorite Bible story? What is your favorite Bible story? I want you to think about it. And because you're in the room with me and we're not at home and I don't have to tape this ahead of time and we're not in quarantine still, if somebody's brave enough to answer, I would appreciate that too. What is your favorite Bible story? Samson. Samson, Samson that's, that's one of Paul's favorite. He named that, right? We got Samson in there. He was named. He didn't, we didn't get the full story, but we got Samson's name in there. What else? Ruth. Who said that? Ruth? All right, Ben. Thank you. Ruth, absolutely. David and Goliath. That's one of my favorites. Absolutely. Who else? Job. Job. Wow, that's a tough one. To, that, that one's hard for me. That's, that's a tough story. He names Rad, uh, Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, he, he names them being Quent, being saved from fire, right? Paul has them kind of in there. Paul has a bunch of people. In fact, the, the writer of Hebrew has all of these stories that he names. All of these, these classics, and he, he wants everybody to remember what happened. The Sermon on the Mount. All right. <laughs> or a mount. So in all of these stories, we have somebody who's faithful, right? We have a, a faithful person. They're not always the strongest. They're not all Samsons, right? Right? We do get that. We got the, we've got the Samson. We've got the strongest person in the Bible, right? Goliath would cl come a close second, but he got beat by a 12-year-old. Am I right? Okay. By the way, that 12-year-old had faith to go up against the giant, right? 
We've got Moses who stood and, and had the experience of a burning bush. Isn't the story where, where the burning bush was happening and Moses saw the burning bush and he went, wow, this is amazing. And he starts talking to God and he says, God, let me see your face. And God says, no, you can't see my face, but I'll pass by and maybe you can catch a glimpse of me. If you saw my face, it wouldn't go well. And so God passes by and he sees a glimpse of God and then Moses goes, oh, now I believe in God. And then he goes home. He had faith, right? He saw God, he experienced God, and then he went and had dinner with his family, right? And he raised his kids, and he lived a normal, happy life, and he was home for supper every day, and he went to work from a nine to five. Is that how that story goes? What about, what about David? He sees this giant, and he goes, yes, I have faith in God. Yes, I believe in God. And then he goes, but I'm surely not facing that giant. Who would be dumb enough to do that? Or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My favorite because I love saying their names. Okay, that's why they're my favorite. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and they're told, you need to bow down to this statue or else you'll be thrown into a furnace of fire. And they go, yes, I believe in God, but I also don't want to get thrown into a furnace of fire. That's a normal inkling. That's a normal human inclination to not want to be thrown into a furnace of fire. You see, all of these people have faith, but then there's, there's something else there. There's something more. Or there's a, a different definition of faith. Oftentimes, when we talk about God, when, when, when we talk about God in our modern context, we talk about faith, and we talk about faith in a way, usually with the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is very important to people in faith. Now, I don't know, many of you may have been raised on Billy Graham. Many of you may have, been, have heard uh, many important sermons. Maybe you gave your, your life to God at, at a big rally. Maybe you gave it in the midst of a, 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 you know 100,000 people, or maybe there was 1,000 people, or maybe it was at a church service. But oftentimes, when people proclaim their faith, they have to, they say something, right? Usually, usually it's some, some sort of statement, right? Like, I believe in Jesus Christ. Faith is stamped by the word, by the name of Jesus Christ. Has anyone ever heard that before? You heard being, yes, is this sounding familiar? None of you know Billy Graham, apparently. None of you This is nothing against Billy Graham. I studied him. I have so much respect for, for the movement and the way that he strategized and the way that he cared for the communities that he went into. This is, make no mistake, this is not hatred on any person or, or shame or any of that. But oftentimes when we talk about faith, we talk about saying something. Like that's enough. Can you imagine if Moses was standing at the burning bush and he says, yes, I believe in God, in, a, in the one true God, and that there's only one God. Amen. And then he went home for dinner. Moses didn't go home. He went back to Egypt, back to the place where he killed somebody. He stood in front of the Pharaoh, even with a stutter, and he started to proclaim that they needed to repent, that the, the, the Hebrew, the Israelites needed to be free, that Pharaoh was, was doing wrong things. Even with a stutter, he started a movement, and then he led them out of, the, out of Egypt into the wilderness to a promised land. And because they weren't faithful at the promised land, not because they didn't say the right things, but because they weren't faithful to go across the promised land and claim it, as God had proclaimed. They wandered the wilderness for 40 years. All of, your, all of our favorite stories are about somebody who's faithful, and their faith comes out in something that they do. All of 
all of this, all of this, this scripture here and all of our worship services follow a pattern, okay? And as a United Methodist, this is really important. This is an important way of what John Wesley says, how we, how we deal with God, what faith really means. And that pattern is this. We remember or we reflect on what God has done, okay? It always starts with God's action. All right. We remember what God has done. Paul does this by, by proclaiming, by writing about all of your favorite stories, right? He writes about Samson, and he writes about David, and he, write, he names all of the greatest prophets and all of the, the most memorable stories from the Old Testament. Look at what God has done. So that's the remember or the reflecting on who God is or what God has done. And then there's a movement to respond. First God moves and God loves us. And then we respond to God's love. This is how we set up our worship services. Okay? We invite the Holy Spirit in. We talk about how great God is. We talk about God in our prayers, in our songs, in our hymns, we, in our opening words. We often invite God into the space, but we often remember. We, we remember what God has done. We get scripture and we reflect on who God is and what God has done. We remember and we reflect. And then there's a shift in the service in our service, the way that we built our service, okay, this isn't for everybody everywhere, but the way that we build our service, there's a shift to responding to God's love. That's why communion, after the sermon. Usually baptisms, after the sermon. Unless it's a little tiny baby and the parents are really, really, really wanted early on in the service. We respond that when we we start doing things, when we give our offering, when we, when we say a benediction, we talk about going when we do our announcements, we do our announcements at the end of worship because we want to respond to God's love with action. They're not just events to show up to. They're ministries. They're ways for us to live out God's love because we reflect it and we remember who God is and what God has done in our lives. So remember your favorite Bible story. Remember a person or a character in that story who's approached by God. God always seems to come first. They always know God ahead of time. Before the story starts, David is confident that God is with him before he goes and faces a giant. David knows God. David, David reflects. He has a he has a remembrance and a reflection on who God is. And that drives David to respond to God's love. Now, all of these stories are vastly different. The bravery of a person going up against a giant or, or of Ruth and Naomi's faith to go in and disrupt a whole political and historical system because they're following God's will. Or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who are willing to die because they know who God is. And in their response, it leads a nation to understanding, to more people around them understanding who God is. Remember. Reflect. And then respond. Oftentimes I think that when we use the word faith in this scripture we start with the word faith. By faith the people pass through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And then what more should I say? Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, all the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, 
quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. By faith. Sounds like a different word than I've been using. Often when I talk about faith, I talk about knowing who God is. I just talk about the, the, the thinking of it all. I have faith in God. I can say that statement and nobody says, well, where did you administer justice? Where did you obtain promises? Where did you shut the mouths of lions then? Nobody responds in that way. The word faith we think it. You see, in our English language, we've separated our, our mind and our body. We've separated the things that we think and what we do as if those are separate things. And faith demands that they become one thing. That when we say we love God, when we pronounce our faith in God, when we pronounce things like our creator, we have one God who created all the world and who loves us and who has overcome death, would require our bodies to move in such a way, to be witnesses of such a thing. Remember who God is. Reflect on the stories. The power of the Bible is that there's these wonderful, magnificent stories that talk about humans and God and, and define relationships and help us understand and explore who God is. Remember. Reflect. And then respond. Respond with your whole life, with the way that you think, with the way that you act, with the way that you speak, as if those are all different things. In other languages, those are all the same things. In fact, in the Bible, when, when God speaks, it's, a, it's an action. It's a ver the, the speaking, the words that come out are, ver are, are things that happen. I pray that that is true in our own lives. That when we speak, when the words come out of us, when our faith is revealed, even in the midst of our words, that our bodies respond in such a way that everyone around us can understand who God is and what our faith really means. not lip service. It's our life being dedicated to God. Faith. Remember and respond. We took the end uh, in our scripture of, of Hebrews 11 and we went into the beginning of chapter 12 and I want you to hear these words and this I pray be the beginning of our response. For us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that we set before him endured the cross, disregarded its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The power of Jesus is that Jesus shows us who God is and shows us the ways that we respond to God's love.
Let us pray. Lord, God, Creator, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, the one who came before all other things. Lord, your love is too magnificent to put into words. And yet, we know that you have been moving in our lives. We remember your love. Now, Lord, empower us. Give us your spirit to guide us and lead us. To bring a light into darkness. To bring love into hopelessness. And to bring your spirit that protects and guides us. Lord, empower us to respond to your love so that others may experience it too. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is now time to present our thighs and offerings before God. Your offerings to new beginnings can be given through check our website, nbie.org, and through texting. God has blessed us with God's presence and love. Let us return the blessings we have received from God. May we give generously for the kingdom. stand for the doxology pray together. Loving gardener, we offer ourselves into your nurturing hands. Receive the devotions of our labors, the fruits of our vines, and all that we are and know, that we may make a difference in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. Receive these sacrifices as a pledge to live our beliefs through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. And some of the, our announcements in some churches, and we want to remind people of the ways that they can serve and, and help others in our community. So here at our downtown campus on the third Wednesday of every month, we have a clothes closet and a food distribution that serves up, up to sometimes 100 families of uh, food and also clothes and there's lots of ways for you to help um, even throughout the week there's times that we're preparing for that um, including this past Thursday we were we were here preparing for that uh, and to host those people we're also looking to uh, engage with them in a in a more intentional way of creating small groups in that community and we really need more volunteers and people to be there to help with the food and also to, to walk and get to know people because it's not just their body that we want to serve. We also know that we're all spiritual beings and that people need support. 
And so we're hoping to really increase that and that opportunity. So that's the third Wednesday of every month here at our downtown campus. At our north campus, every second and fourth Friday, we have something similar. It's more close. Saturday. I thought that that's what came out of my mouth. The second and fourth Saturday of every month um, is our clothes closet and food distribution at our north campus. And that's very similar. There's a lot of care that goes into those clothes and into making sure that people have uh, experiences where they can come in and shop with dignity uh, for things that they need for their families. Um, and then we're also providing food on top of that. At our West Campus, we have that happening every week. We also have Pastor Raphael who's driving around and receiving food from several different sources, and we're distributing that throughout the week. So these are some of the ways that we are trying to connect and uh, help the community. And most of this is their physical needs. We're also in desperate need of people to be a part of that, to come alongside those ministries and to start caring for the people themselves, to start thinking about them as a whole person. So we hope that you'd be able to come and join us and give in any way, shape, or form that you can um, your time or your money in, in any of those opportunities. If you have any questions, please see me afterwards. We'd love to connect you with those ministries. Uh, we also have a small groups that are happening. There's a small group that often meets right after worship to reflect on the, on the sermon and to come together and uh, take care of one another, care for one another. Um, so Jan Winhausen is going to raise her hand. If you'd like to stay for that right after worship, um, that'll be uh, across uh, in our Bethany room. Um, we also have choir that's coming back. If you'd like to join us for that, that's after Labor Day. We'll be meeting on Wednesday evenings here at our downtown campus um, that's every Wednesday at 6 p.m., I think it is. Um, and that's after Labor Day. There's lots of other ways to get connected to our church. We have a, a weekly email letter that goes out. We also have a newsletter that's uh, right in that back stanchion if you're looking for more information about what we do. And, um, and commitment cards. Commitment cards are back there as well. And let us close and respond to God's love with singing as we... Sing together our closing hymn. Please stand.
receive this blessing. May it be known in your heart, in your soul, in all your life that God loves you. And let us respond with God's love to the world. Go now to love and serve the world. Amen.